Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy, your place to learn just about everything to do with Bitcoin. And when I mean everything, I mean everything because this represents the entirety of Bitcoin's economic energy ecosystem. Now, that's a uh, quite a few mouthful of words, so let me just break it down a little bit. So you've got these three key directions on the top side, which is energy production and energy consumption. And they represent the physical world of Bitcoin. And maybe I should put it the other way around. So the, the digital side is on top, but maybe for another video. Now on the bottom half, you've got, well, Bitcoin mining producing hash rates, which produces Bitcoin blocks, which is where Bitcoin comes from. And so in its entirety, we've got solar which is a producer of electricity bitcoin mining which is a consumer and stabilizer across such a grid system and then you've also got bitcoin mining which bridges the digital phys physical gap that the only thing that can update bitcoin's blockchain and allow bitcoin to move is people out there in the world consuming excess cheap electricity to produce bitcoin which moves it between the wallets. And the only way Bitcoin moves between wallets is an update to the chain. The mempool, this market here, the amount of Bitcoin you're paying per virtual byte to pay your Bitcoin to store information, and the miners are the ones producing the block space and getting paid said Bitcoin that you're paying them. So you've got these three core markets interconnecting these worlds as well. And, oh, where am I? And these core markets are going to be the energy market, Bitcoin per kilowatt hour or megawatt hour for industrial scale. That's Bitcoin miners saying, why would I sell you my electricity when I can globally turn it into a thousand sats, whatever the number is? I'll sell you the power at thousand sats because that's what the network is paying me. So miners have this global comparison as the bridge between the two physical digital worlds, and they have a choice, sell you the power locally or monetize it globally. And if both paths reach the same destination on the other side of the equation, well, that is the new establishment of the energy markets. And that goes into the conversation of Bitcoin as a unit of account and the pricing of things. And the emphasis of miners consuming electricity and their efficiency aspect, and that creates the dollar per terahash pricing of that market. Obviously, we're at dollar per kilowatt here for now. And obviously, people thinking of what fee they're paying. Why this is particularly important is because today's state of Bitcoin, where 99% of block rewards, the, the income that miners get, is subsidy. It's that fresh supply of Bitcoin to distribute the full 21 million. And once that full 21 million is distributed, uh, essentially subsidy represents the training wheels of 100 years. So you've really got to think of Bitcoin in a multi-generational way that in 100 plus years time, that all of the Bitcoin will have been mined, so to speak. But what do the miners earn? They earn the fees of those holding all of that 21 million Bitcoin with half of it lost to wallets and thefts and whatever else, and the other half circulating. And that circulating Bitcoin is paying fees based on those using Bitcoin as a settlement layer for trade and transaction, not your coffee purchase, but maybe the purchase of your house and land and all those sorts of things. But interestingly enough, when it's just fees pricing all of this energy and the income aspect of, of having your own compute, this market, the, the, the block space slash fee market, becomes the fundamental market for settlement. You've got the fundamental market for compute, which is dollarized for now. My business that I haven't truly delved into detail, which is the democratization of Bitcoin mining, in simple language, allowing everyone to access mining in a financial sense so they can learn about it, knowing, oh, I paid this amount of energy, got paid out this amount of Bitcoin, and you take the maths layers and build a financial layer on top, which I've been doing, and it gets very interesting and boils down to this. Miners produce a hash rate and they consume it in the effort, mining pools, the collection of loads of Bitcoin miners hash rate to produce Bitcoin blocks and get paid Bitcoin. So you see that there's this interconnectivity 
Bitcoin blocks being produced and those paying fees to consume it. And that is the circular economic energy ecosystem of Bitcoin. You can use all different ways to observe this, the, the body, mind and soul, the holy trinity. It's a, it's a rabbit hole to, to offer different perspectives to view this in different ways. And yeah, that's uh, one interesting way to see Bitcoin, not just for today, but that multi-generational future where once all of the subsidy, once all the 21 million is distributed, Bitcoin uses this state this setup. This is inevitably how Bitcoin stays alive. This is its bloodstream. Um, you could consider the, the, the blockchain, its, its heart, every pump coming every 10 minutes of time approximately. And as, as there's more pressure in the system, maybe it, it constrains it to, to add more value to the units. Because that's exactly what happens. The, the value of Bitcoin beyond the debt money system of today, you really have to strip down your idea of dollars in your mind and pounds because um, they've become just as normal for us to understand the measurable value of things in the shop, the price of the house, food, going into the pub. Like it's, it's, it's become, debt money has become as fundamental as length, width and weight and all these sorts of um, raw measurements, SI units. And you have, it's really tough for a lot of people to, to change the perception of those units in their mind because just look at the world today. Uh, the units, the, a dollar buys you less over time. The, the dollar stores, I think, don't sell anything for a dollar anymore because the costs, the energy aspect to produce said items keeps increasing. And fiat money tries to price energy. It tries the petrodollar system. It, such uh, large superpowers have invaded countries and they typically are countries with a lot of energy-based resources or partnerships with energy-based nations. And the other thing I'd like to offer is the, the interplay of wealth in our world. The, what's the superpower going to be in 10 years, 50 years, 100 years on a Bitcoin standard? It truly is those, in, ter in terms of a national scale, that build out electrical grids, allow miners to stabilize them. It's a, it's, a, it's a consumer of energy that is strictly economic. They strictly want to accumulate as much sats for the energy they have available. And if that requires selling it because they can earn more, that's the grid stability aspect, or turn it into global money, it, again, it doesn't matter in this system because you could sell the energy and reach Bitcoin or consume and produce Bitcoin. And so that circular interplay of the maths and the finance on the outer layer, it, it just builds a system that, that works. The, the, the chaos of grid, uh, grid instability, wherever it may, may be in the world, the financial markets, compute in of itself is this crazy phenomena of one specific chain with the majority of compute. But these uh, alternative proof of work chains um, on an arbitrage sense, sometimes miners will switch the hash rate to a smaller chain because they see lots of fees or a price increase. They capture that premium from that small proof of work chain and flip it into Bitcoin. People do it with crypto miners as well, but you're, you're at risk of uh, trying to buy a computer to capture the fees of some other alternative chain that by the time you get the computer it's, it's just not going to pay you back. So it's a, it's a, it's a true zero to one phenomena. Uh, if you look at the stock markets of the past and even to today, it was the energy companies that were the most powerful. And I think of Standard Oil split into multiple different companies because the energy sector in financial terms is the most powerful. It gives out oil to the world and receives money in return. Just, just look at the Middle East. The, the abundant amount of wealth that they have is strictly because they export commodity value and import money. Same with California with the gold rush. Gold left California and goods and services value businesses and people flooded in. Now we've got a system where you, in the middle of nowhere, can issue money and spend it locally because of, of an energy-based system. Uh, it, it's like um, it's like California 
on, I don't want to say steroids, but everywhere. Imagine if energy abundance is monetized and stabilized everywhere. That's what's happening now underneath the hood. You've got the financial world trying to gobble up as much of this money as possible, but underneath the system that sustains the value of Bitcoin, if it shoots up to a million and production is still pushing 50, 60 to 100K, there's too much premium. It, the price in dollar terms can drop. But on that, in that future state, it's an energy-based system where the, the price of everything else in society will drop to its utility value because no one wants to hold assets such as property for financial uh, goals that right now a lot of people escape the dollar the pound the euro the yen they escape inflation by holding assets because the assets keep raising in price because there's the money's dropping so you, you escape the melting fiat iceberg by holding assets but right now all these assets are financialized 2008 is a key example of this. Um, people selling mortgages in the high risk way and packaging and selling them on. And it's the financialization of property and the financialization of dot, 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 insert just about any sector, any word is that everyone's trying to understand where they can preserve their time and energy, their work in something that sustains value over time. Whew. Um, so I think I will leave it there. That's just a lot of information. But yeah, you've got the physical side, these three com components, commodities, the digital side of supply and demand of data settlement, supply and demand of energy in the energy market, supply and demand of compute. And uh, what I'm building myself is what if all of this was one unified liquidity infrastructure set up uh, with a financial layer on top. That's where it gets very interesting. But that'll be a topic for another day and another time. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.